Hi, we're here with the founder and CEO of YPlan. I imagine many of you are familiar with it, but for those of you who aren't, in a couple of sentences, what is YPlan? Sure, Anthony. Uh, so YPlan is a mobile-centric marketplace for event tickets. You know, for consumers, we provide a beautiful mobile app and a website to help discover and buy entertainment tickets in just two taps. For event organizers, we help them fill venues with more people. Right. As it happens, of 100 people that buy a ticket on YPlan, 90 of those wouldn't have come to the event without YPlan. So that's what we do. We help people discover phenomenal events and we help event organizers fill more seats. Right, so you guys launched, I mean, initially in London um, in about almost exactly three years ago. Almost to the day. And, you know, so I'm curious, especially then, you know, there was probably a lot of different event discovery startups, you know, lo you know location social startups, and I'm curious, I mean, how, what made you confident at the time that YPlan was something that, you know, there was, there was room for? Great question. Um, to be honest with you, uh, YPlan was the very first company in event discovery, and especially on mobile-centric oh, really? okay. event discovery. Yeah, you know, this was 2012, late 2012, and it was still sort of the early days of like mobile commerce. Like it wasn't even clear that the you know models like Uber, for example, will be taking over the world. Like it was just, just, just starting that whole wave, and we just realized that actually mobile is going to change everything, including right. how people go out. You know, for for one, uh, going out is a massively social experience. Right, so few people go out solo. Right, in in Wipeline's case, over 90% of all ticket all, of all purchases are for two tickets or more. Right, so it's a massively social experience, and social is very much enabled, you know, by mobile. You know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. That's all, you know, primarily mobile driven. So, you know, early on we said, okay, the, the world's going to change, and the way that people go out is going to change. We may be just as well be the first ones okay. to actually help facilitate. Uh, and benefit from that change by being a mobile, by taking on a mobile-centric approach. And at the time, there weren't really that many competitors. Right. Um, so a there lot were, of them there were probably like ticketing. <coughs> there was like social apps, but like there, and maybe like content exactly. apps, but nothing that was sort of at that intersection. The That's way you precisely guys are. right. So if you were a customer, you know, somebody did a, a nice graph there, you know, that showed, oh, if you want to, you know, before Wipeline, if you want to go out, how does your journey look like? <laughs> and it looks awful. It looks like a snake like this, you know, with stops along the way, Foursquare here, you know, a messaging app here, you know, it's just, and so Wipeline just combines it all into one place and makes discovering as well as social sharing and all that, plus transactional part, extremely easy. Mm -hmm. So uh, how broadly are you available right now? So Wipeline is available in five markets right now. Uh, we're live in London, New York, San Francisco. We just soft launched in Dublin and Bristol and uh, many more are to come right. uh, in next year as well. Just out of curiosity, why, why Dublin and Bristol is sort of the next ones? Oh, those are fantastic cities with, uh, with, uh, with a lot of young people who like to go out, uh, who have a little bit of disposable income, uh, and where mobile penetration is good as well. Um, and you know, cities like Dublin, for instance, what we find is uh, the word of mouth there is a massively effective use uh, or, or a massively effective engine of growth for great companies. And at Wipeline, that's 60% of our growth is word of mouth. You know, we count over two million downloads now, uh, and over 60% has been driven by word of mouth. Is you know, people sh sending tickets to their friends or inviting friends to events or just telling people, you know, how great the service is. So we felt that was a pretty tight fit. Mm -hmm. So besides the, the number of markets that are in, are there, is there anything else that you're sharing in terms of you know the growth you've seen or the usage or anything like that? We had a phenomenal year. Uh, you know, the company the company has done uh, has done great this year. You know, we've expanded the proposition. We are an app only business. Uh, now we also have a fully functional website. So you know, try it out if you haven't yet. Um, that allows people to discover and buy events. You know, from the comfort of their phones as well as you know if they're at work, for instance, right? And they prefer to use a desktop computer. Um, uh, we've uh, we've also now uh, made the proposition such that whilst last minute going out is a very big use case for us still. You know, it's still close right. to half of all purchases. But it's now as easy to buy for next weekend or the weekend after as it is for tonight. And we found that because of that, the reliance that our customers uh, can place on us, right, and reliability that we're providing to them uh, has gone through the roof. As a result of that, we have excellent customer retention rates and on the back of that, you know, there's growth uh, that comes uh, in addition to new customer acquisition, et cetera. So I'm curious, um, especially in terms of the moving on to the web, I mean, in some ways it seems like, you know, we've seen a lot of like traditional web businesses realize that the importance of mobile, launch their own apps with, you know, varying success. What was it that made you decide that the web was going to be an important part of your business even though it's, you know, arguably sort of maybe a little bit less sexy now? Yeah, so I, I won't share uh, you know too many details there, but the way we've thought about web is that it is a fantastic conduit uh, to our mobile product to actually be able to reach a broader audience 
uh, and then tie it all back to mobile again. So if you're, if you're a web user and you buy on the web, chances are that during that experience, we will be able to migrate you to the mobile app later on as well. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you can discover and you can buy anywhere, but then once you've gone through that experience, once chances are, you will become an app user for Wipeline as well. And that's what we find. You know, once, once you've gone through the Wipeline experience once, you tend to fall in love with it. And so you come back for more. And there is no better way to do that than on the app. Mm -hmm. The challenge is, you know, where do we catch you that first time around? Right. See, we've talked about both, you know, sort of geographic growth mm -hmm. and also, you know, product uh, additions. When you think about where Y Plan goes from here, do you think that one over the other is going to be sort of the focus for the next year, or do you think we're going to see developments on both, you know, geography and product? Definitely developments in both. Uh, the product continues to evolve. You know, there's still a lot of things we need to do. You know, we just really started scratching the surface in terms of how the product can help facilitate the pretty organic and messy general experience of going out. Think about the last time, you know, you got invited randomly on Friday afternoon by a friend, you know, let's go out, check that gig, or let's go out and do this, right? It's a very organic experience, so if you want to facilitate that through technology, that's quite, that's quite you know, sophisticated and quite difficult. Similarly, there's a lot of invisible work that happens uh, at Wipeline. Uh, the reason, so we have, you know, we, We've been mobile focused, right, mm -hmm. for, for three years since our, since since getting started. Um, the conversion rates that we see on the app is absolutely phenomenal. And one of the reasons for that is that a lot of the work that we do is behind the scenes in terms of recommendations and personalization. So understanding our customers based on their social media profile, based on the explicitly given preferences, and based on machine learning uh, that we've deployed in the app, right, mm -hmm. every time you're using right. the app, basically it becomes a better and better experience. So there's still a lot of work to be done there, uh, but it's all, it's all bearing fruit very nicely as we see it now. So the last question I have for you is, given that you we're talking about you know, big nights out, big events, um, what's the last really fun night out that you had? The last really fun night, huh? So uh, with my wife, we tend to go out probably once a week. Uh, okay. I guess, right? That's, so, still, that's pretty good if yeah. you're, for a married guy, right? Yeah, yeah, the, the, more, the more memorable one, well, I'm going to Mumford and Sons tomorrow, so okay. uh, that's going to be fun. Uh, and the last one that I would like to maybe mention is the Heartbreak Hotel, which was an immersive theater experience, a little bit similar to Punch Drunk okay. uh, in London, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. or Sleep No More right. in New York. Yeah, yeah. And indeed, it's uh, it's like partly the same production crew, uh, and they did this uh, they did this in uh, in London and uh, uh, just next to O2 Arena. Went there about a month ago. That was a blast. And you found it through Y Plan? Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks very much. Thanks very much, Anthony. Thanks for having me.